High School Football on WCIA 3 is sponsored by Loman Ray Insurance Group and Illinois State University. Now, all the action and excitement of high school football. This is Friday Football Fever. Welcome to a jam-packed Friday football fever. I'm Brett Barons. Craig Schott and Anissa McEwen are both out on assignment on a busy Friday night in central Illinois. The Lanai are hosting 10th-ranked Penn State. We'll check in with them here in a few minutes. They just took the lead, but when the college game tries to come in and take a Friday night away from the high schoolers, we say no thank you. We are sticking to our roots and starting with the preps, you can wait, Illinois. And there's no better way to start than with two unbeaten 4-0 defending state champ GCMS and 4-0 Fisher. The mascot is almost as scary as that helmet decal. Fisher down seven and back to punt. Bryce Barnes blocks it, scoops, and scores to make it a 13-0 lead in the first quarter for the Falcons. Then on the extra point, they fake it. The quarterback, Nathan Girard, keeps it, finds the end zone for the two-point conversion to put GCMS up 15-0. Bunnies really struggling to get anything going offensively. They fumble the exchange. The Falcons fall on it to give them great field position. And Mike Allen's team on the very next play gives it to Peyton Keene. He gets to the edge and gets in untouched for the score. GCMS wins it easily 56-0. The final history on the line in the Leonard Bowl at Sacred Heart Griffin. Head coach Ken Leonard looks to become the all-time winning leader in the state if he can beat his son Derek and the Rochester Rockets. Rochester fumbles, Cyclones there to snatch it up. Kate Holloway recovers and Alex Tabora takes advantage of the Rockets' miscue with the touchdown to make it 7-0. Rochester does not score a touchdown. Two field goals is all they get the whole game. And in fitting fashion, what a way to do it, Ken Leonard. Congrats to you. 45-6 the final. Leonard now the all-time winningest coach in state history with 375 victories. St. Joseph on good 4-0. Spartans make the trip north to Pontiac to face the 4-0 Indians first quarter. Pontiac QB rolls out, but chased down from behind by Ben Setterdahl for the sack. SGO really struggling, though. Still scoreless when Keenan Swanson calls the quarterback keeper. Nice pickup for the first down, but Pontiac makes a statement win in the IPC. 42-20 the final. 42-14. The correct final there, Pontiac with a big win. So they sit atop the conference with Monticello. They started the night as the only other undefeated team in the Illini Prairie Sages playing at Bloomington Central Catholic. Braden Snyder takes the snap, fakes it to Alec Bundy and breaks two tackles on his way for the 20-yard gain. It sets up his next play. This time the pitch to Alec Bundy, who reverses the field, runs it in for the 18-yard score. That's got play of the week nominee written all over it. And this is all Monticello, 56 to 8, the final. Our spotlight game of the week takes us to the Royal Foresight. The Trojans hosting Pleasant Plains. Josh Josephs' club looking good early and often. Pick it up in the second. Trojans leading by a touchdown. Lane Olmeyer with the big time sack. Then Merle Forsyth back on offense. Ian Benner hands it off to Gavin Clifton, who barrels through for the score. 21-7 Trojans now. Less than two minutes until the half. Trojans driving, and they get it to Clifton again for another one to take a 21-point lead at the break, and they go on to win it easily. 49-7 the final. Clinton has jumped out to a fast start this season. They're 4-0. Welcome a hungry Tuscola team to town. The Warriors lost in the regular season last week for the first time since 2014. A lot of defense in this one. Clinton's Drew Stacy with the interception on Tuscola's opening drive to give them some good field position. Still later in the first, Warriors get it down the field, but they'll set up for a field goal from Cade Christine. So Maroons looking to score in their start of the second quarter, but they'll bring it in. Kicker J.O. Cosinzia ties things up at three. This one turns out to be a low-scoring affair, 20 to 11, but Tuscola does come out on top. Good showing, though, for Clinton. Jenna Oriana looks to stay atop the little Ocon Valley Northwest Conference with a win at Decatur LSA. This one belonged to AO. Josh Williams passes to Mikhail Stanley. The ball bounces off of him. He still catches it. Another play of the week nominee there. Eight nothing after the two-point conversion. Arjena kicker Blake Hobner kicks the ball so that Arjena gets the ball back on that play. And then Josh Williams. Hands it to Skyler Peterson. Man, Ayo has a lot of weapons. That made it 14-0, and the Bombers take it easily, 44-8. 
the final in that one. We stay in the LOVC for Cerro Gordo Vermette at Arcola. Both teams come in with a three and one record, trying to keep pace with Arjuna Oriana. This one, pick it up in the third quarter. Wait for it, wait for it. Pedro Guyana sneaks into the end zone and catches the touchdown pass, much to the liking of that Purple Rider crowd. Later, CGB with the ball. Ethan Mann looking to make a pass, gets the ball to Brady Greenwood. But the Riders take him out for little to no gain there, and they get the victory, 35 to 6. The final from that one. Apollo play has Matt Green welcoming Muhammad Seymour to town. The Bulldogs have lost two straight. Green Wave have won two in a row. Something has to give here. First quarter, Jack Pilsen, 32-yard pass to Brock Smith, who takes it to the end zone. Touchdown, Green Wave. Later, Jordan Velvet has done it all for the Bulldogs this season. He gets the handoff here, runs in for the score. Muhammad keeping pace, but Jack Gear kicks a field goal to score another three for the Green Wave. This one comes down to the very end, and Mattoon pulls out a close one, 31-28, the final from that one. Centennial and Urbana both play tomorrow at Memorial Stadium. Central makes the trek to Peoria tonight to play Richwood's first drive of the game for the Maroons and first play of the game. A sneaky reversal on the kickoff return. Connor Milton taking it to the house for the touchdown. The long touchdown there puts them ahead. Then later on in the first, Tarbell Evans finds a huge hole. Nobody is catching him. 90 yards. Two more Play of the Week nominees there. We are going to have a tough time picking those this week. 28-17 Central. A nice road victory for them. All right. Hey, we're rolling here on Friday Football Fever. Salt Fork leads the Vermilion Valley with a 4-0 mark. Storm step out of conference play tonight. Though to take on Tri-County, Kane Wilson, the catch and the pass outside, slip on the defense, and he finds nothing but good Vermilion County error there to put them up 7-0. Looking to build on that lead, Max Brannigan takes the handoff, and he is in for another touchdown. 14-0 at that point. Salt Fork all over this one tonight as they post the easy win there. They are still undefeated this season, 5-0. Saltport goes on to take that one, 42-13. They are a team to be reckoned with in the Vermilion Valley. Can't wait for that Saltport BHRA game coming up here in a couple of weeks. All right, we roll on. Meanwhile, down the road in Oakwood, the Comets look for their second win of the season after dropping the first three games. Comets up by a few touchdowns at the start of the half. Quentin White grabs it, runs it down the sideline for the touchdown, 35-8 at this point. I feel like Oakwood's had a really good season, but played a tough couple of teams here early on. They're looking good later. Colby Smiley with a slip pass, a few tackles, and he is gone as well. 43-8 at that point. And Oakwood picks up a nice win tonight at home over a Tri-County team that only lost once coming into this game. Oakwood, 57-8 over Iroquois West, not Tri-County in that one. All right, our last prep visual stop takes us to the eight-man game where Milford sits in the park and Judah Christian meet for the first time in school history. Bearcats up big in the second quarter and looking for more. Nick Allen gets a great block. He is gone. The touchdown run makes it 38-8. After a Judah drive stalls back to punt, but it's blocked. Jared Shunky gets the paw on the ball. Allen there to pick it up, but he can't scoop and score. No worries. His teammates got his back. Kennedy Kush plows his way in for six. 64-24. Milford Sistna Park takes it by 40. A nice win for them. All right, the high school